What's up guys? I held a poll on my Instagram. I let you guys pick what the next video was gonna be about. And overwhelmingly, it was to show you guys my childhood comics. The moment of truth, Joe's cartoons and comics. It said something else here. I had painted over it with blue paint because I didn't, like, I guess I painted the spine. It probably said something too. I don't know what it could have said. I just, I think I wanted to label it down the middle. I'm sure I had labeled it like something weird, but okay. This is fun. This is, this is a fun one. I'm gonna save the, the, uh, the best one for last. To start these, I had a, I don't remember what inspired this, but I had a character named Seagal. I don't know why, but I did. Number one, it starts off, it says, in a place where pigs fly, and you can see a pig flying, oink. There was a bird. I guess this is like an action shot of him walking. Not quite sure. I laminated all of them too, because I thought it was official when I was that age. There was a bird, a seagull. Hiya. I just, I just put his name there, I guess. Ah, he screams. I need a bodyguard. And then a dinosaur chases him away. He's not that bad. He's not the best. Oh, there's a bag. I think there's a bag. So I guess a dinosaur pops out. This is from, at the time that I drew this, I had just read this book. Ook and Gluk or Ook and Gluck. And it's got a dinosaur in there. And, oh, you can see him right there. It has a dinosaur in it that I was I was obsessed with. I was obsessed actually at the age with the style of this guy. Of, what's his name? Yep, Dave Pilkey was the guy's name. I'm, a, I'm still to this day, I love his art style. The simplicity of it and the easy to digest-ness of it all. Um, but there was a dinosaur in this book that I was so in love with that I had taken the character over to my own stories and made my own iteration of it, which is definitely not as charming as the other one, as Dave's version, but yeah, so a dinosaur comes out to get him and he karate chops it and it says, wham! And that's the dinosaur falling backwards and his jaw is dropped, jaw dropping. So I guess he just was not expecting to win the fight. I said, till the next. They all end that way. They all say, till the next. I love that. So this is number one. This is the introduction to Seagal, our character Seagal. Chapter two or, or number two, which is actually stapled and has multiple pages. And uh, let's just go through this one really quickly because this one's long. He says, I'm back. That's right, he's back, says the narrator, me, I guess. From his first adventure, and it's him reading his own. Oh no, it's him reading the newspaper. Did you hear the news? He's back in reference to himself. Ah! Oh, he's no, no, no. He's referencing the dinosaur. So there's the dinosaur peeking its head. Oh man, this one's gonna be hard to, this one's hard to. Oh no, I guess I folded it like this to read it at some point as well, or prior to this. Oh, a train, how convenient, he says. So a train's passing. And he hops on the train, and of course, while he's on the train, the dinosaur's mouth is at the end of the track, ready to eat it. He says, ah, stop the train. And instead of stopping the train, he just jumps out the window. And he hits the ground over here, face down. And the train goes into the dinosaur's mouth with his teeth closed. Very interesting way of drawing that. And the train is so hot, I guess, that it blows steam and turns his eyes red. And he jumps in the water, which doesn't make much sense because if he was at the edge of the cliff, he would have been standing in the water already. I don't know. But he jumps in the water to cool off. And number two continued. So our buddy, our friend, Seagal, jumps in the water with him for some reason to bite him. Looks like he bit him here. And then he climbs a ladder that just appeared and says, I got away. And then he'll get his, he says, I'll get you. And I said, till the next turn for a few new guys. So this was actually, this is really cool. This is uh, me trying to do my own character development at the time. So some 2012 characters, I guess I just put the year and called them 2012. I'm not quite sure why I actually did that, but there's a chick uh, some type of robot, a uh, fire guy, and another type of robot. Interesting. I don't have very good memories of where these characters came from. I'm pretty sure this is a character that a friend of mine 
kind of drew on some of his homework or something, and I don't remember. I must have been inspired by that. I have no idea where that came from. This, I'm pretty sure, is from the old school fire emojis when the iPhone 3 was out. And I don't know. I think. Oh, 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 that movie with the blue guy. What's that movie with the blue guy? Megamind. I think it was. Uh, it was either Megamind or it was that movie with the, the, the slime character, if that was still Megamind, I don't remember. But this was inspired by that robot too, which I'm pretty sure it just was exactly that robot that just drawn in my really crappy 12 year old self style. Yeah, that's my introduction to character development there. Not amazing, but for a 12 years old, I mean, I stapled and everything and assembled. It's not bad, it's not a bad comic. Looks like I'm missing number three. I've only got number four here. Don't know where number three went. It wasn't in the binder and it's not double-sided. It's only one-sided. It says, I've been jogging for three hours. It hurts. And then he starts crossing a bridge that has spikes underneath it. And then he says, I'm done. And gives up in the middle of the bridge and the bridge snaps and collapses. And then he says, ah, I'm okay. And then it says till the next. So I'm gonna presume that he didn't land on the spikes if I remember correctly, and I was really young, so I don't really remember correctly at all, but I'm pretty sure this was meant to be a, this was meant to be a broader idea. I'm pretty sure I wanted him to fall, but he didn't really fall. That's why it's kind of like looking at him not falling and then him opening his eyes and realizing he hadn't fallen at all. I don't remember, but this one is probably the worst one. This one has no back. It's just super short. I think the second one definitely tops all of the other Seagal comics. Yeah, that's Seagal. I don't know where I came up with him. I'm pretty sure the actor Jason Siegel or something. I don't remember. Oh, Finding Nemo. I think I like the Seagulls in Finding Nemo or something and I wanted to draw one and I don't know. You know when you're a kid, you're, you fall in love or become obsessed with all types of random stuff. And uh, I guess Seagulls and dinosaurs from, from Dave Pilkey's Ook and Gluck or something, I don't know. It was fun to be a kid, I have no idea. Let's go over this one, which is another two-page comic, but this one has a lot more substance. Ooh, excuse me. This one has a lot more substance, and it's definitely uh, very inspired by Looney Tunes. But this one's called Bad Luck Good. The story is becoming a little more complicated or uh, complex. So the character's name is Harry. It says, this is Harry, lonely little fellow. He lives here in a cave. Click, turns the lights on. So I guess it's still dark over there, which is kind of cool actually that I had drawn a light, but tried to show that the light only made it so far over. Tried to set it up as like ambient, I have no idea. So bored. Spelled bored wrong. I was you know, 11 or 12 years old. Boom, something fell right through the roof of his house. So I guess there's a cave or I'm sorry, a cliff above his cave and the cliff had fallen off onto his cave. Oh great, what else? Smash, boom, pow. Through the table, another piece comes off the ceiling. That's it, I'm leaving, he's defeated. I think this is, this is interesting. This is kind of depressing actually. It's just a series of unfortunate events for our friend Harry. So he leaves the cave, which, wow, look at the way I drew the cave, or the rock wall with like the scattered lines, very interesting. Um, oh, a house. So just another cave, I guess. Problems are gone for now. And I still, I think it's cool because you can still see me do a lot of stuff like this in my newer comics. Not this. I don't dedicate entire panels to just dialogue. But the way that I try to illustrate perspective was very much on point for the way that I still try and do it now. I guess he enters the cave and I remember this. It's a table full of ninjas. You can actually see the way that I had distorted their, or the way that I had uh, illustrated their, 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 um, poses was actually not all that bad like his arm is extended over the table his arm and his arm are like over the edge of the chair like this it's, it's really not all that bad for the for for what just for stick figures you will die says the ninja just directs threatens to kill him it doesn't even introduce himself or ask what he's doing there he just threatens to kill him bring out the beast the beast is a tentacly creature of some sort three-eyed tentacly creature like an octopus or something it says doing, which really said looks like it says doing, but doing his eyes, you know, pop out of his head because he's seeing a scary monster. Bonk! A rock just falls on it. I don't know. Easy out. I have no idea. I didn't want to set up a fight scene. I don't know. Let's run, says the ninjas. They don't want to fight him. 
Well, it's time for him to go home. Oh, that's funny. So he said he just ends up living under a bridge. He's just got his TV playing. He just says, I'll live here. So he found a house to live in. It's a happy ending, I guess. But we're not finished. But all is not well. Die, says the ninja. Blam. What does that say? Ua, awa? I don't know. You suck. It is now. That's a really pleasing ending to such a depressing story. I'm a fan of this one still. This one, um, this one's fun to look back on because it was like a very, it started out sad. There was a narrative, a little bit of character building. Um, I think that this one still holds out. You see, I wanted to make sure it would never come apart because there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven staples in the side of this thing. That's funny. Okay, let's move on to the last one. And I wanted to save this one for last. This one's called Once There Were Two Gangbangers. Now, let me just say, we didn't really fully understand what a gangbanger was. It just sounded cool. Like, gangbanger. Like, it just sounded cool when we were in... This was fifth grade, so I don't know how old you are in fifth grade. Uh, 10, something like that. It just sounded cool. Now, this is this this turns out to be a superhero story, so let's, let's just dive in, because this one's pretty bad. So, Slinks. This is the introduction to all the characters that are going to be in our story right now. Slinks which was Josh's design, uh, the good guy, so the superhero. Slips, which is uh, another one, that, oh no, I'm pretty sure I designed Slinks. He designed Slips, which was a hand, which I think the name was inspired from something from regular show, I don't remember. I can't remember exactly, but uh, he's a gangbanger. And then my guy, Fry, which is also a gangbanger, uh, is, Fry is actually designed after like a sea creature of some sort. They were, we were learning about sea creatures in fifth grade. And I liked the design of one of the, one of the, there was something in the ocean. Like I actually can't remember. And it's so poorly illustrated. I couldn't even tell you what it was really based off of. But yeah, this is something from regular show. This is something from the ocean. And this is a, uh, a slinky. So our story begins with a car at a traffic stop. Slips uses himself to create a slingshot and shoots, f what's his name? Fry all the way over to the car and he breaks in through the window. He chokes the person in front out and kills them because they've got the X's on the eyes and he kills the passenger as well. So there's murder in this story. And then it says the gangbangers killed two people and you can see them like maniacally laughing in the bottom corner. And then uh, they set the car. <laughs> They set the car on fire and they say, har, 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 har. Um, and then they asked, Fry says, who should we kill next? And then Slips turns on him and says, I will kill you. And then Fry says, not before I kill you. Slips says, oh yeah. Fry goes, oh yeah. And then Slips says, get ready to die. So they lunge at each other. You could tell that they're lunging at each other by our arrows. Fry stretches Slips out, which is actually kind of funny, and Slips is in pain, and Fry is in pain too, even though we really didn't show him getting hurt by Fry, or by Slips, but uh, they had their fight. Slinks finally comes to save the day, and picks up Slips, picks up Fry, and sticks him in jail. So they say, no, and they're in the same jail cell, so I don't know, they, they may have kept fighting, I have no idea, they may have fought to the death, I don't know, and it just says the end. Um, so yeah, this was a story about two gangbangers who committed a double homicide <laughs> and, uh, uh, I don't know what it would be some type of, uh, felony, I'm sure for lighting a car on fire and destroying evidence. Um, and then they get taken away by a superhero named Slinks and they get put in jail for a day, two days, a year of life. I have no idea. We did not, um, elaborate on how long they were incarcerated, but yeah, that is one of the worst things that we've ever drawn. This one's pretty bad. So this is, uh, <laughs> this was uh, the worst one. Now, really quick before I uh, end the video, I wanna show you what this is. This is really freaking cool. This is a combination of drawings that I had done. So each page that you see here is the back of a piece of homework from high school. So when I take it out, I'll show you. Each one of these is the back of homework. So instead of doing the homework, I would just draw on the back of it all. And you can see that I attempted to combine each page. So it was, each page was a, a, 
an extension of the story. Uh, this was about spiders taking over the forest and chopping everything down and all types of stuff. You can pause it and, and take a look at it. I, really, I won't elaborate too much. This was in 2016, actually, right there. There you go. 4.30.16, I dated it. I ran out of content on that page there. But that's okay, there's still more. So as the spiders go on, they've got a flamethrower. They've cut the trees down. The f trees are on fire. Again, very Adventure Time inspired by the faces on the trees, the style of tree. Uh, we've got here the spiders have a hideout in the burned down part of the forest where they've got jeeps full of uh, supply carts. I don't know all types of stuff. They've got a spider bunker. Oh, I was playing Fallout 4 at the time. A lot of Fallout 4. So this was actually, I believe, um, a bunker inspired by uh, uh, places in Fallout 4. Here's the last page. It says clean, cool woods, but it actually just says clean spider woods. And it's anything but clean. Everything's on fire. This isn't the cool thing. Let me show you the cool thing about this. Check this out. They're all taped. Turn everything out of the way. So the whole thing comes out in a book. And you can actually lay it down. Let me lay this down on the floor and I'll show you how long this thing is. Cause this, I can't even hold it up. It's, it's, it's folded up on the floor right now. Let me fold it out there. Let me show you what it looks like on the floor. So this is how long it is when you lay it down on the floor. It's super long, which is, it, I, this was something that I just did for fun. I, I didn't really expect to ever show anybody this type of thing, but it's really cool. I'm a fan of it. I still like looking at it. I started over here and I made my way down. Every day I drew something or in every class I had added something to it. Now I gotta fold it all back up. Yeah, but that's my childhood comics. I'm really glad that you guys voted uh, for that because that was really fun to show you guys. And I, I, again, I think it's a really cool example of like quantity creates quality and that like you can start from anywhere and have any, any quality of work. Um, and eventually with time, you can start to achieve things that uh, you feel confident in, you feel better about doing, uh, you become comfortable in your, in your art style and, and you, you just, you know, things just kind of unfold. Um, you never know what, what things, what opportunities will present themselves if you just uh, begin uh, a, a, pr a passion or a hobby and just get into something without, without the full confidence that you'll be good at it. Really what I'm saying is commit to something. Don't let the intrusive thoughts make you think that you uh, aren't worthy of or won't be good at the thing that you want to do. Just dive into it and if you do suck at it, just understand that that's totally normal and that you're supposed to suck at something you've never done before. You'll never become good at something if you don't suck at it first. And you also may never know if the thing you get into you're actually good at to begin with and you would have never expected to be good at that. You would have thought your the little voices in your head were saying, oh, you're going to suck at that hobby or you're going to suck at that passion that you have been wanting to pursue. But you actually get into it and realize, oh, you know, I'm really not that bad at it. I'm actually relatively, uh, re relatively good at it. And now I actually have only only up to go from here. You, you always only have up to go from 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 there, even if you suck at the thing you start at. But you'll never really know the potential that you could have had or what you could have brought to the table if you hadn't really just jumped into it in the first place. So I think that showing you guys a lot of my childhood stuff and how crappy a lot of this is, is a really good demonstration of starting from the bottom, now we here. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I've created a lot of different stuff over the years and if I had listened to the voice in my head, uh, I never would have created any of this. If I had listened to the little guys in my brain that said, ah, don't start, you won't be good at drawing. The little voices in my head that don't don't start sculpting that you you won't you won't be good at that that thing you're trying to make is going to be crap or it's not going to come out the way you want it to uh i would have never been able to create this or any of the other various things that you see here on the wall like like this gamecube or these sculptures of the boys here or over here this giant poster or this skateboard shelf that holds a lot of my random crap like, I would have never created any of this stuff if I had listened to the voices in my head that said, don't do it. Attempt to do things, even though that you may think that you won't be good at them. Just do whatever you want. Uh, you are the only person that's stopping yourself from learning a new skill or uh, becoming proficient in a new thing. I don't know. Just do whatever you want. Life's short. Just get into something. Make something. Go, go make art. I want to see what you guys make. I like looking at your guys' art. I love looking at other people's art. It inspires me to make my own new art. It's awesome. Uh, I love you guys. Thanks for watching and go follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna leave them linked in the description. You can vote on the next video or just follow me on there anyway, just to keep up with what I'm doing or 
to look at some of the behind the scenes stuff on all types of stuff. Like I shared this on Instagram, I share all this stuff. And you can follow me on my Locks Comics Instagram, you can follow me on my Campbell and Kirk Instagram where I show off new comic books or uh, right now I'm working on keychains. I'm working on Campbell and Kirk keychains right now. I'm not gonna show you anything about that. Uh, go follow me on Instagram because you'll actually see that project when it's finished. And you can subscribe to me on Patreon where I'll actually, you will get a comic every month I, or as I make them. I make comics, I try to make them every month. I don't always do it. Um, but I'll ship you a comic every month to get on my mailing list uh, this month for the patrons or next month. Whatever month I get the keychains finished, I'm going to finish casting them and painting them. And then my patrons are going to get keychains. Camboy and Kirk keychains. Like like actual physical keychains. I can hang off your keys. Like I'm going to make that and get those to my patrons. They'll be on my website for purchase. I'll link my website down below as well. But if you join my Patreon, you get on the mailing list just to begin with. So uh, you, can, you don't have to do anything. You just kind of hang around. You can view behind the scenes posts. You can... Um, be involved in decision making, uh, see comics early, and then at the end of the month, if I had, if I was able to accomplish anything at the end of the month, I'll just send you them, and you don't have to do anything. And just join if you've got some uh, disposable income. Yeah, click on the links below. Uh, I love you guys. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you over on my socials. So.